I think one thing is clear. Card games give anxiety. Anxiety, bro. Like, people that we have to deal with is like, oh, this is kind of cool, it would be good, great, but you were not prepared, so it's fucking flop, it's fucking garbage. You know. That mentality is at least accurate. Although, normally people just fucking hate, just spit garbage of like, who are they, right? Like, who the fuck are they? I'm just a random dude who wants to just upload videos because life fucking sucks, bro. That's all I want to do. I didn't fucking ask for hatred. I didn't ask to fucking feed homeless people for free. Across YouTube, bro. So many homeless people. Like, if you don't like me, but you're, I got recommended to you, I mean, that's the problem, right? Fucking ask YouTube to fix the algorithm. Crazy how my thumbnail got recommended because I put effort on a thumbnail. It's fucking insane. But I think what exact actually is going on is the majority of people who don't want to deal with social pressure, they just fucking stay silent and listen. People who can't take it no more, they watch two minutes of my video and they have to like vomit into the comment section. But at least they, they could be like more honest about it, right? This is not what this video is about. It's not me ranting about garbage people. It's a lot worse because it stacks on top of everything. The fact that card games are multiplayer. They are now forced to be multiplayer. I had so much fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Why? Yu-Gi-Oh is shit though, Guru Next. What the fuck are you talking about? Exactly. I had fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh because it was not fucking multiplayer. I think that's the biggest fucking issue. I have to play against the same garbage pieces of fucking shit who play meta decks who fucking look as boring as fuck when you do this nonsense. So if I just... I, People are the worst feature in card games at this point. Just other people. I don't like other people no more. Which is the most craziest thing, right? I'm like, what this guy playing? Oh, it's the same thing. When that, that shit pisses me off a lot more than it's like, oh, it's a new deck. If it's a new deck and my opponent is doing some wacky shit, like, wow, cool. We're never going to be friends, though. Nothing got, nothing's going to happen. You know, win or lose, there's no social values being exchanged. So why the fuck have other players in the first place? The only thing that it does, it gives Blizzard free employment, basically. You know, we're playing against each other. And they're making it competitive and aggressive and fucking... Just nonsense. The competitive... I thought it was a small problem. I thought it was a small problem. I put it in like a D tier in Hearthstone. I think it's S tier across everywhere, across every single fucking multiplayer game. Multiplayer experiences are the worst thing you can have as a human being, bro. If people don't know how to be nice, you don't have a game no more. You must understand, like, there has to be an escape from the multiplayer, you know. An escape sometimes means playing Tavern Brawl, but you're still playing multiplayer. An escape has to mean you have to do like Raran. You, you have made friends, you play against your friends, you do some fucking cool stuff versus your friends. That's... Raran is trying to escape. This is the reason why he's so popular right now, why he's just succeeding. And it's easy for him. Because he's not playing standard Hearthstone. He's only playing standard Hearthstone as a, like, a little challenge. Little thing of like how to operate cards, a certain deck, two legends, and all that shit. He did it once, right? He he did this thing. And sometimes he hits legend in different ways, and that's it. That's the the only interaction he has with standard, pretty much. Otherwise, just playing against his friends, just looking at other card games, it's just kind of weird, bro. Also, now battlegrounds. Battlegrounds, bro. A little bit of a little bit of everything, pretty much, and it's successful. But the reason why is because people are fucking assholes, and across the board, they just copy and paste the deck. They have super fucking anxiety issues. They're mesmerized by the game, 
I... It's fucking mental to me what's going on. Because I'm scared for their lives, you know? Like, this is crazy to me. I'm so pissed off of how the games operate. And this one, at least predictably and consistently, is nice. Right? The single player experience, I just click some buttons, I know what's gonna happen. I can make my own card game and it's gonna be single player, and I can be proud of that. That I actually ripped Harson oh, apart and I don't want more. features. Because some features suck balls. Some features just make you an it's terrible an human being. Oh, Often I'm enough, fine. I play too much Hearthstone or too much of something, some multiplayer shit, and I feel terrible about it. I feel terrible. I feel like I'm wasting my time, but I'm addicted to it for some reason, and like I have no control. But at this point, I have to like figure out what it is. Because I've seen too many people who are overly competitive. Even Zeddy himself is overly competitive. And he kind of has to be to feed the masses the news. The only reason that why they would care is that you have anxiety fucking problems. Of like, I have to be the best, I have to be the best, oh my god, you're not, you're not the best, you're not top 1000 legend, bro. It's crazy stuff. And in the end, it's completely meaningless. If you're not having fun, you're not gonna get anywhere with the game. The purpose of a game is to have fun. If you're not doing that, you're losing 100% of the time that you're not having fun. It's just something we have to learn. The, the real meta game is to have maximum fun. And uh, kind of study that shit more. I have decided my videos are gonna be hour long and I will piss everyone off just on purpose at this point. I don't give a fuck who gets offended by that. That my videos are not good enough for them. You know, they're good enough for me. So fuck you. You're not good enough for me, though. Your commentary is not good enough for me. Just that simple. The restoration mage can never be counted out. People have anxiety and they have superiority complexes, bro. They think they achieved something in life. But in the end, they just piss me off. That's it, bro. That's all I see out of them. You know, if you achieve something in life, people actually respect you, you know? A president knocks on your door, you're not gonna fucking be like, Oh, get the fuck out of here, right? You're not gonna do that. Because he achieved something in life. Jesus would fucking knock on your door, you, you wouldn't be like, I hate Jesus, you know, straight in his face. Nah, he achieved something, you will shut the fuck up when you see one. This powerful, bro, and influential in your life. I will destroy you. I just can't, like, stand together. have this, like, feeling of, like, fucking multiplayer always me. sucks because it's multiplayer. It's just so fucking frustrating. Like, cut that multiplayer out of my life. But first, I have to find the proper reasons for it. The obvious reasons is that people are not creative, people are not interesting. That is, like, super obvious reason. Is like that good that. enough? That people are not doing anything? People are doing you quantum, you though. Can right? Lost. You can still watch quantum. Funny enough. Feel my I think uh, card games are an uh, untapped market if it allows single-player experience. Because multiplayer one kind of sucks. But what else? Then, multiplayer has to be extremely balanced. Like, extremely balanced all the time. They need to add new fucking content. There's a lot of problems that just comes from that. Maybe we can just summon problems again. And get ourselves a little bit of a information boost. Just a little bit of awareness of what's going on. Will I survive? By the Looks pretty bad and well he did equip a sword and I have How clumsy nothing to interact with. No, I, I survive. Yes. 
It's annoying when the opponent like does dumb things, you don't want to like see that, but it's still not necessarily bad. Not necessarily breaks the game because you just make AI stronger. That's it, bro. That's the counter to stupidity of AI. Being stronger. Now, it can get boring when you can exploit AI. So, but it's up to you. I played Skyrim, I exploited Skyrim to some extent. I stand on the rock and shooting with arrows. Now it's kind of dumb and I stopped doing that. It's like, shit, what am I doing? I want to have fun, right? So I want to give my opponents a fair chance. I want to play realistically, right? And people are not, not willing to do that right now. I think it's a big problem. All right, we're fucked. And the anxiety is also annoying because you know there's a person on the other side that can piss you off with e emotes and all that shit. You have this layer of garbage on top of everything. High rolling. Yeah, people find it interesting and it's kind of not really interesting. But it would be pretty good in like single player time when you have to high roll to win or something. I don't think it's relevant though. Killer creep. You know, you have uh, you have Hearthstone uh, stuck on just promoting new content all the time for new players, just to keep players around, which is dumb. You can stack content on top. What Hearthstone did is just they killed the game. They killed themselves. They own the fucking game. Because eventually the game is gonna die. The new things will stop providing new experiences. That's the whole point. The game dies that way. But if you have single player experience, you just stack on top. You just make things better of what people don't really like playing. It's a whole nother level of, you know, providing proper contents. They stopped making dungeon runs. They stopped making, uh, you know, similar style of adventure shit. And it's like, but you can just make it and leave it. People will play it like years later. It's not a big fucking deal. They will play years later. What's the point? What's the point of leaning so much onto multiplayer that the, everything just disappears when it's no longer balanced? If you want to make multiplayer, you have to be fucking mastermind of balance. And we see... Fucking third graders make hardstone at this point. Third graders can do fucking better balance than this bullshit. They just like calculate what happens when you play the card. What number uh, of health and attack you get when you play a card. A fucking third grader can do that shit. And these fucking professional card game designers can't do nothing to satisfy me. Unbelievable, bro. This pisses me off. This world holds and most importantly, wonders. they can't even make a card game because it's no longer interactive. In the end... But what's the Perhaps point, I right? If your opponent is gonna play armor and freeze your board, play board players, just constantly do absolutely nothing, just avoid playing minions because, oh my, I really need that combo, I'm anxious to play that combo so I can win this game and whatnot, and just so fucking pathetic, bro. So pathetic, bro. In arena, it's sort of like normal, but there's still anxiety of like losing the fucking game. In performing, some people are just gonna like waste way too much time, and, and people just get kicked out of the uh, those experiences out of arena because like it just becomes repetitive, over competitive, right? That's. That's definitely the the set of words. Repetitive over competitive. That's how we roll that's how we roll around here. That's the greatest meme of all time. I don't care, I don't feel other people's pain when they they say my videos are too long or whatever. That's why I do it. I will never feel your pain. I will never feel what whatever the fuck you're talking about. It just is what it is, and I'm very comfortable doing it that way. And if you got teased, well, that's on you, isn't it? 
Don't make me hurt you. That fucking sucks again. This is a crazy card. If he just randomly generated. This one Imbecile. I don't think it freezes. Oh my god. We just lost two games in a row just for nothing. Alright. And two first games in a row. Which is really bad. Uh oh, we got Rush. I hope. And fucking Flop. Fucking hell, man. Well, some balance is required, like, this is unbelievably annoying. I can't do shit. Well, I really can't summon it here. Just lose, man. He still has guard, though. And I have nothing. Unbelievable. This does not happen to me very often. It still pisses you off, but it's like... Now Our what, right? Has been well, Elder Scrolls Legends just defeated. doesn't offer enough interactive cards. They have to have Rush because there's no Borklers. So at least there has to be Rush. These warriors want nothing more. Most of my cards just can become completely useless. There has to be rush, like the, the prophecy mechanic is absolute garbage. Why not? Elder Scrolls Legends is not a perfect game by any means. And yet it's it's still better. Still better. Still gonna survive the test of time because there is no time, it's just limitless. You think you can defeat me? Let's Content Creator is gonna make some crappy videos. With uh, crappy new parts. Oh. And we're gonna move on into next year and forget about the last year, you know. And that's it. Which is very sad. Like everything just dies constantly. <laughs> Am I playing this still the same fucking opponent, it seems like? Unbelievable. No prophecies, please. They shall Just have another no mage that die. I can defeat somehow. I probably built a very terrible deck. The mage is Nothing like a good battle. This one will the never dream. Literally the same. Literally the fucking same right now. Khajiit will use their strength the against right you. Am I getting food right now? This. God you. That's how everything else is. Sometimes you even just want to concede. I'm like, this is not supposed to be normal. You just want to concede from my game. You want to see how things play out. If you want to concede... Another one of the fucking same bullshit! Cards! What the hell is going on? Like not. I have many important things on my mind. I hope I win, bro. Uh, behold right, I the future. Behold the future. That is so weird. If they're smart. But with this, it's, it's ultimate matter like the balance, and you're not gonna get that much gameplay. But does that matter? Or am I just stuck like a fucking loser? Right, when I should have been doing something better. Our challenger. Let's find out. You know, wait, that's definitely someone true. But like, if if it drains you entirely, that's also ridiculously bad. Just that alone, like you spend time, that's great. But you should be like happier out of the other ends. And I'm just not happier. If the game does not leave me happy after I invested time, like. I just burned my fucking time and I feel felt horrible the whole way through and I wanted to get my investment back basically to achieve something. It's lame, bro. I'm just thinking of like what is required for games to succeed. Yeah, 
I mean, testing grounds for sure. The same thing. Why? Khajiit will use their strength against them. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. How will I stop this from spreading disease? I can't even play this no more. We must count on our wits. Oh my god, you gotta breathe. Monsters. The biggest anxiety attack you get is when you think like you're not good enough. But in so many ways you can be like fool that you're not good enough. So many fucking ways people can just keep on telling you bullshit things and you start believing them. But it's so annoying. Because you want to believe, you want to believe that people are nice and they say truthful things. But they could be nice and stupid. Which doesn't help very much. Of whatever they say. It doesn't matter much if they're stupid. So you have to test every single time. If a person you're talking to is stupid or not. Or just give up. Just feel like, well, people are stupid. They're gonna say stupid things. And if anything sounds remotely stupid, you just Restoration mage can never be counted out. Behold, this is monster. A lot of people think what I just said is stupid. And it's like, whatever. Nothing will stop You're probably mind. wrong. Because people don't say stupid things, they do stupid things. Right? But if it's a, like a one-liner troll move or just full hate nonsense. Now, now you're doing stupid things. Now you're wasting your time on me. Need a everyone around you. Let's do the fish. People are able to do it because they don't. They don't feel people around them. They don't feel the pressure. Same goes with card games. Like, if you were a content creator, you would feel pressure of you can't play shitty decks, right? You just can't play shitty generic decks. That would be a pretty good pressure, I would say. I can taste your fear. Eureka! You can kill me. But in the end, we just kind of like give up and like. Even Zeddy now, because there is a variety of decks, he can sort of swap which scam deck Let's to play. Let's do the fish. Even now, he's uploading shit. Fascinating. Yeah, you can't, you just Nothing literally can't like play big battle. cards. Card games are not like fully explored. The Dren will never best of Naturally, you like beat anxiety by being nice, I believe, and demanding that people are in fact nice will kind of give you anxiety because they will not be. They Let's would follow the the low. The Dren will reward Relentlessly. Because they don't care. They don't understand why to be nice. If that's your only way to fight anxiety, like, you're still gonna fall into the same problem of other people not being nice. Perhaps a direct approach. Like, I can play the coolest deck ever, but if my opponent doesn't play cool things and just wants to counter me in every single Your way, loss is my game. I'm not... I'm not gonna do very well. With content, with nothing, nothing's gonna work. Nothing's gonna click. I'm not gonna find anything, no experience. I'm just gonna throw all the good things into the void. Even though they're, they were good things, they have to, like, click with the opponents. And it is a race of, like, figuring triumph. out what the hell is going on Let's and how to, how to effectively fight against this insanity. Alright, at least I didn't dry like loss. 
Drop the drop on our challenger. Technically, there can be a secret adjustments happening while I play the game, which is kind of interesting as well. But this can be done with multiplayer as well, with randomness. If someone's losing a lot, you try to give them a little random bonus. Does that work with the ward? No, it doesn't take damage. So it does not work. But this ward... He's not gonna attack? Fair enough. What else do we have? I have anxiety because I'm not getting paid. That's the biggest one. So I just want to do whatever the fuck I want. And that adds even more anxiety, actually. If I knew that I'm getting paid and I get views and all that shit for like certain things that I do, certain way that I do work and all that shit, yeah, maybe I would do it that way. If things were guaranteed, I mean, it's a little bit different than when uh, YouTube may decide that the video was good or may decide that the video is bad. I will never know. And I don't have time to go try it. Even if the video is good, it's probably just gonna give me 3,000 views and that's it. Who knows exactly how things are supposed to be done. Like, Mr. Beast is, is still trying new things, like, oh, here's a 40-minute video, right? He's still trying new things. He's also fucking filled with anxiety of just trying things. That's what it is, you know? You're never fucking truly comfortable. That's what anxiety is. Behold, my magnificent monster. Nothing like a good battle. Alright, this looks fucking cool. I'm gonna smash into a big creature. Never been done in Hearthstone. How clumsy of you! Oh, it's not good. All right, now we can like let's set up like this. Either way it works. What if I do this because I don't want to take damage? Perhaps we can help one another. Honestly, the best idea. So I just don't want to take damage. Death, thank you. Scale this coward. Oh no! Well, we lose 100% of the time because there's poisonous. That one costs 10 mana, guys. At least that. That's justice. Would never give ground. No, I just lose. Then there's anxiety of like, oh my god, oh, but there's the viewer, and the, the viewers definitely fucking push their agenda, for sure. Challenger, this is how I reward. want things to be. This is my problem with the video. Truly. Not everyone can fix every problem that you fucking have with your video. I mean, with my video. Or uh, whatever video you find that you claim to be yours. Couldn't fucking win those three stupid games. Welcome to the arena. I'm pretty sure like Hearthstone made me a, a worse person, a more toxic person. And uh, the rest of the card games made me a worse person. Despite no knowing how to play these things, I just became a worse person. The, the only thing I know vote. besides that is a little bit of card games and game design and all that shit. I just know a little bit of that. But everything else is just like a black hole of insanity. That's what gaming turned out to be. Like, gaming is still a new concept, my friends. It's like, uh, it's younger than Toaster. 
so to speak. And Toaster kind of disappeared from households like fucking microwave, right? Who needs Toaster anymore? So potentially, we don't need like multiplayer gaming or something like that. It's not a social experience, it's just full anxiety nonsense. I've seen it in school, if people liked multiplayer games, whatever they liked in school, I'm like, I know you guys are stupid, so I will not do that. Whatever you like. They play poker. They do stupid shit, man. Which is borderline bullying and being annoying. Playing dumb games. Yeah, the biggest anxiety is when uh, you're stupid, but like you don't want to admit and you have to do something, but you're too stupid to do something. So you just lay there doing nothing. And I don't have that issue. But I know I get sucked into that. The moment you like, you would cut off the card games, you would feel such a withdrawal of like, shit, but what do I do now? Exactly, bro. That's the end game of anxiety. You have been addicted to something, you cut it off, and your life is completely meaningless. That is the weirdest part that can happen to people. Anxiety just makes you addicted. So, it, you can't always be nice, and you shouldn't always be nice either. That's another trap. Because the, the nicer you are, the more difficult it is to break addictions. Slavery, boys. So many people just sucked into this, they completely blacked out. And potentially making our society uh, uh, inflate prices a little bit. Because the rich people just gonna, you know, oh... So we have control over the, the world. No one's gonna resist, right? Because no one no one cares anymore. We're just playing games after all. But we could play games against billionaires, bro. We could win those games. We could actually outsmart billionaires if we know how, how card games work, because everything fundamentally is made out of life itself, right? If you find the the life lessons out of card games and you sum, sum, summarize everything and you learn that shit you can get ahead of everyone else but we still have to find those everyone else because they don't really exist in my room so I pretend like women don't exist nothing exists bro and people do want to be on, on the internet which is nice and uh, increasingly more I think there's more wealth to be made on the internet it, it gets sucked and like even the greatest capitalist of all time can just, you know, trick us. We might even be able to just make our own food or some bullshit like that. I've seen rabbits, meat rabbits coming back to fashion realm. Like, are you kidding me? There's some weird shit. But yeah, definitely I feel like a worse person. And even Zeddy talked about the toxicity overall. Just the... If he talks about something, it's ten times worse. It's ten times worse than you can imagine because you don't understand. I barely experience it, I would imagine. It's a lot worse for uh, more people, not just me. But you have this anxiety of like, oh, I've lost, but there's still something I can do to make things better. You can't do nothing. If, if the other side of your screen is absolute vomit and garbage you're you're too good for this you know like you're too good for that experience to for your life to be ruined by the other side of the screen right which is often being presented as like a feature but multiplayer is not a good feature it breaks games as we have discussed by trying to develop multiplayer they waste time often enough and uh, maybe they shoot themselves in the foot by relying by leaning too much on this anxiety but it's not a good thing so if you lean on a bad thing you're gonna get stabbed because it's probably gonna be sharp and deadly if it's not good it's gonna teach you a lesson to say the least my deck sucks because i have no two drops and it pisses me off that's that's the most infuriating thing about elder scrolls legends I can't play cards fast enough to, like, interact with my opponent. Oh, 
I need to break hearts faster. Coming. And they suck in the most infuriating bullshit where you start with one mana. Our challenger has it doesn't work. The, the, the guard games don't work Let's when you just have works. one mana. You can't do shit on turn one. You can only like suffocate because you don't have enough cards. Like if you had an... You, you, if you want to do like draw cards, you start with three mana, you just keep drawing cards, you have more options. I understand, but starting with one mana and just suffocating because your opponent played a one drop and two drop and three drop and Kruparian uh, talked about how they even sometimes play a four drop in Arena and how he had to run away from that. Into Battlegrounds, bro. Where it seems like it started with more mana in Battlegrounds. For some reason, and it works that way. A lot better. You have to start with three gold, right? It's by default, you have to start with three gold. Crazy. How people think that this progression of one, two, three, a progression of doubling mana and then adding 50% to mana, that this progression is like normal. It normalizes itself, but it's not normal. Hearthstone fucking suffocated from this one problem. This game is suffocating from the same problem. Sometimes copying another people's game is just gonna be copying another people's problems. That's what end up happening here. It's frustrating, bro. This is why we have to learn life lessons at this point, not just design. Life lessons, bro. And if you're not gonna do it, if you don't like me for some fucking reason, then good for me, because I'm just gonna continue being better than everyone else. For real, dude. And I don't care how much anxiety you have, because again, anxiety is not a good fucking thing. It doesn't matter how... how you will try claw your way across my face. It, and make me fucking look bad, you know, because my face is full of fucking scratch marks. God. I don't think it's gonna work, because you have to Behold. fundamentally attack my self-esteem. Fundamentally attack the deepest being within me, and understand who I am truly as a person. So yeah, there's a lot of things to learn, my friend. It is a multiplayer experience, there's a lot of people invested. And they want to interact. Minecraft, it wasn't a multiplayer experience until it kind of was, but then it wasn't again. Minecraft was weird. But Minecraft, like, without anxiety, you can almost last a little bit longer. You don't want to quit the game that, that badly because you will always be able to find something you like to do. But with multiplayer, you're gonna spend more time. You're just gonna be forced to spend more time What's because the progression business? is very slow. They usually speed progression up in single player games for some reason. It's stupid. I have never seen a single player game besides no. Road Life that has a slow progression no of acquiring cards, of getting different experiences. There's, I have not seen a game that's just slow. For a single player experience which is weird this is also very fast like i got a lot of cards very fast and you're not gonna unlock anything but i can again get a lot of cards and resources and after one year i like but that's the whole point right no one thinks of like oh you have to play this game for a year that makes no sense for a game developer you you'll play this for a year no one actually makes sense of the most important thing of like how to make the game eternal for everyone to make the game fun for what everyone forever next. how to allow slow out. progression but we have you know this roguelike shit where i which i sh still have to mention balatro bro look at that shit. it actually stunned a lot of people because it's a perfect game design it's also eternal game right and it doesn't feel like you have to like complete it because there's nothing really to complete but you can finish your first run you you can get as far as you can with the score you can figure out your own goals and you have to do it the minecraft style goal surge uh 
But again, this is how you have to think as a game developer. You build a, a game that has ridiculous amount of gameplay. You slowly unlock new items and all that shit, new strategies, new combos. Like, that's fucking cool. That's how everything should be designed. And multiplayer aspect is going to come later, naturally, once things are figured out. Once your game is like a multi-million dollar entity, you can add multiplayer as a generous move. This is why, and I'll, I'll tell you this much, it's easy for me to tell, this is why Raynet has failed. Because Raynet is trying to make a multiplayer game, and a fully polished multiplayer game, that makes no fucking sense to me, bro. It makes no sense for him to do that. This is the hardest feature of all time, bro. Multiplayer. Mm hmm Is the hardest, and it's... Very dangerous feature, it seems. Very dangerous for a lot of people, because if people become anxious, like, video games do cause violence, and you have no idea how fucking terrible of violence that's gonna be. We just haven't seen this game... gamer generation unleash their violence onto the world. Because it might not be just an explosion of violence, it can be self-harm. You know, it can be mental illness type of violence, which is just as bad, you know, as a fucking uh, school exploding randomly. Harming yourself just because, just because you feel bad all the time, and that's kind of fucking crazy. Just getting up on life? That's how I feel sometimes, you know, just like, oh. I feel like I'm giving up my life, but I'm so smart, I can't do that. That's impossible for me. So I'm a little bit torn, but in a good way, you know, I'm still hanging on to my brain cells. The big reason why I'm doing this video is like, I'm, I'm trying to enjoy Marvel Snap, but it's just garbage. There's this Hela experience where I see my opponent play Hela, and it's always like the most degenerate thing, and I want to like, escape it, and I can. And now I'm just like, oh shit, I, I have this feature where I can escape, but nothing really happens. How do I now trick my opponent into not escaping, but then, like, not much matter because everyone just plays for themselves, either. But when you make things matter, it's like... But the real problem is, like, how difficult it is to make a multiplayer experience. We just basically got a glimpse, but maybe this is poison. It's just pure poison. Of people really try harding to just dig out the juiciest garbage they can throw at noobs, you know. And people fairly much figured out how to play the game, so there's no more clowns to harvest. So there's, there's nothing to do. There's, you're not gonna win the game most of the time. Unless you play the best deck. But to play the best deck in Marvel Snap, you have to unlock the cards. But to unlock the cards, you're screwed, basically. You know, that's what people's sentiment is, and I sort of understand. Looks like that's another big problem with multiplayer games. They exploit people. Ah. Exploit the shit out of people, so they return over and over and over and over. And right now you see the Hearthstone getting into the next level of exploitation of what they can get away with. It's weekly quest, right? Well, we want players to play more Hearthstone. It's just a multiplayer game, so we have to play more to be competitive. Blah, blah, blah. Man. They can manipulate the rewards system so damn much. Or you will not be competitive no more and you will fail life. Yeah, sometimes I say too many things and everything gets lost in obscuration. Information obscuration. You hear some. When you hear something in my videos, you have to write it down for yourself. Write it in the comments. It doesn't matter. You know, you find something in this one one hour, you find something, you can write it down. This is how you can not be a hater, you can avoid being a hater. You find some good insight that I say, 
if you subscribed or not subscribed, you should be subscribed because this is the most important part. If you find some, because I probably will repeat this a few times. I have to write it down myself. Because that's how it works. Ah, uh, fuck. Go on. Try to hit this one. I played too fast. Definitely missed so one. If you find an insight in one hour video, maybe it's nice to let everyone know instead of complaining. That's what it that's the power of being nice, right? You're gonna get your stupid likes, people will try to like appeal to your feelings and shit. But yeah, I I was very bitter and like trying to all these combos and they they don't actually work. And you have to like play the generic good cards and win that way. But generic good cards are fucking garbage. So there's no actual gameplay because you're not forced into different experience. You're just gonna play Lizard on turn two. Because Lizard's pretty good on turn two. Congratulations. Just kinda lame, man. When it's not random enough. Your experience, your deck is not random enough. The only thing is random is whether you're gonna have a two drop on turn two or not. It's the only random thing in it. On one side it will fucking suck if you don't have the two drop. And on the other side, it's just meh, you know? It's like, I played it. But it will suck on, on one side pretty badly. Because you just like... Spoils. So annoying. And so many card games just start with one mana. And the game is slow because of that. Like really fucking fundamentally slow. A, a winner triumphs. is not gonna be decided next. Let out. by how well they play cards because you can't play cards. With one mana. I have played two Tavern Brawls. One Tavern Brawl where the game was sped up with, uh, you know, roping 15 second turns. And that was an amazing experience that I constantly bring to life, you know, like... When people should play like that. People should just have 15 seconds for a turn. This should be Blitz Hearthstone, Blitz of every single kind of game. But instead we have Blitz Chess. Fuck chess, bro. What the fuck is that? I don't like chess. It's the most boring looking thing in existence. The second experience that I've played is Hearthstone where you start with 10 mana. And that was pretty good experience. And I was like, shit, we should play Hearthstone like that. And you would think like, but, but whoever starts first wins the game. I don't give a fuck. That part is fair. The whoever starts first is in fact random, but at least you get to play cards, bro. Even if first first player has 60% win rates, it's still fair because you're gonna get to be first 50% of the time. You know, you should start with 10 mana in every fucking card game. At least then I wouldn't feel anxiety because my opponent would actually start doing things, you know? The biggest anxiety is that nothing happens. But it's not in, in Marvel Snavis. Marvel Snavis is fucking weird. Everything happens on turn 6. Everything, bro. Way too many things happen. And you just like... Oh, I guess I lose. Oh, I guess I win. I have like, sort of like, in my doesn't feel like nothing. Marvel Snapper. Turn 10 nonsense. I mean, turn 6. That pisses me off. Marvel Snap probably gonna get hatred as well from me. In return. Instead of praise. It depends. We will still have to learn many more things spend a lot of time a lot of people just want to dismiss me on hearthstone like oh you didn't spend enough time you haven't reached legend 20 times you know even though it's the easiest thing the hardest thing in hearthstone is to have fun bro it's the unbe unbeatable challenge 
Here can easily have fun. Yeah, and that's another super annoying thing. Not only everything is overly competitive, but overly slow, because you have to wait for your opponent to respond. At least Marvel Snap cuts half. Like, it really tries to speed the game up. Just desperately. Raynad is like, oh shit, I can make asynchronous gameplay, right? So it's uh, incredibly fast. Maximum speed. Asynchronous. So people are trying to, like, rip apart the multiplayer experience so it just stop being... I wait for my turn, you wait for your turn, we and all shit. A challenger pick. Understandable. We might still just land at uh, the easiest spot of just killing multiplayer in general. For the time being, God knows how many other things are suffering in your life because it's you can't avoid people 100% of the time, right? But if you just filled with anxiety... Now, outside, you're not gonna feel anxiety, because you're not playing the game. Once you stop playing the game, you will feel other problems, other mental problems. Because it's not like you, you want to be the best, so you have to wake up as early as possible, you have to play as many games as possible. That sounds bullshit to me, I don't think people are doing that. Except for Korean girl. They don't like sleeping. Alright, for the uh, last few minutes I'll just really, really think about it. Yeah. Oh, multiplayer experience of just like, hey, here's this new drug I, I found that has 51% win rates. It's crazy, I know. Literally everything comes out out of this box. Stupid player base, of course. Most people are just gonna be little children that we have to deal with. And we we can easily exploit little children, but not for our benefit. It's just not gonna be fun experience to exploit little children. We never know when we're actually doing that to people. The little child who doesn't know how to play the fucking game, and we're exploiting them. And they might never want to play that game again. But that's their problem. I'm telling that much. They're, they have to just be better. Every time. It's a cool thing to do. To be better. So I don't mind exploiting little children. It's not like brutal. And they still are allowed to make friends with you or something. If they act like they're assholes, then they don't deserve to be befriended and helped. And that's another multiplayer thing, right? Very interesting. Huh? The exploitation of noobers. Which is another thing that brings idea. anxiety of, like, you don't want to be a noob, you don't want to, want to be smart enough. And then you go circle back into copying and pasting the best Nothing deck. Will hold me back. And then circle that back onto developers, pressuring developers to balance the game. It's just such a weird cycle of bullshit. And it feels like that the root of the problem is the multiplayer. Close is ranks, the fact that it's there good. is bad. They'll need a healer. Which is so weird. I mean, I talked about it for an hour now. We made progress. It's definitely not done. More people have to contribute if they can, if they learn how. Because, again, I, I want to do many things. It's not fun for me to just sit on one topic. I'm too smart for that. It's not fun for me to talk to just one person. They break into pieces. They're as fragile as I am. I understand I'm fragile and I get upset. But they don't understand it until it happens. 
A single player experience can be just a steady rise. Everything can be balanced. Everything can be corrected. You can see correct data given to you. Players can choose to communicate or not communicate. It's still single player, bro. No one's exploiting anyone. If they do that, they're just gonna complete the game faster. If they want to complete the game faster, that's on them. I think multiplayer is in fact the problem. I think that's the conclusion we're drawing here. There's no indication that it's the other way around. Multiplayer actually gives me a wonderful experience. No, it just eventually turns into like a vicious cycle of people predating on each other. We're waiting for nerves because we're hoping the game is going to be balanced, but it's never going to be balanced. You know, and the game just dies. For me, Hela is just a terrible experience. For me, people playing the same thing means that the game is not balanced. There's this Odin thing running around across uh, Marvel Snap. People will exploit the game, and the moment they figure out how to exploit the game, the game does not exist no more. That's when multiplayer experience stabs itself in the face and Who zombifies will? itself. Rampage. And should be avoided by all costs. You should be doing anything else, you know, than commenting on it even, like, just try to stay away as far as possible. The reason why I survived this long is because I, I can build decks, right? I can build my own experience and I don't have to worry about what my opponent does. I can build decks and I can survive in standards because I did something. But even now the game just became in a toxic way, right? Because everyone tries to speed up, try, tries to squeeze those fucking mana crystals. Or they will lose if they don't squeeze the mainline. They, they had, they tested the fucking tavern rolls. They pushed those out. They saw how it works. And they still haven't figured out that 15 second timer would be a great game mode. That 10 mana to start with would be a great game mode. How did they miss that shit? You know? That we forgot to tell them, the developers, that it's just that simple? Or they don't care? I don't know, bro. People didn't post enough Reddit posts? What happened? I haven't heard uh, Zeddy complain about it. So, uh, we need to say the same shit a few more times, just in case. That's what I did in this video. See you guys next time. And now I'll just try to survive this aggro game. I am too sleek for you. I do the best I can, bro. If people are not happy with that. You die! Holy shit. That's what he said though. But you kind of die, because, like, if you become too toxic on my channel, you'll ban. You die. For my life, you're dead. You may you never talk to me ever again. People should not play around with that shit. People shouldn't play with other people's feelings. Unless they really don't care. Then it's like, whatever. Right, I care like about a lot of goes. people. I don't, I don't I know if I ever want to pull anyone. I will push them back. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's way more fun to push them back. To fight against trolls. Than to be the troll. That's, that's how the metagame ships in real life. Count it out. I'm not gonna win this. Close right, shut them down. In the end, again, I always tease my hard game as the saving grace for me, for my sanity. I'm making it for me. Cut them down. 
But uh, yeah, I I'm just gonna take more time for that instead of complaining about Hearthstone. I'll try to develop more, which is sometimes its own frustrating experience, but uh, because everything has to be balanced, life has to be balanced, and to find balance in life is a fucking whole nother level. Like you, you can have nice things like internet, right? But it's not gonna be balanced. It's gonna suck in, suck in your time, and you might waste time, and you might be like, "But I'm artist, but AI can generate your art right now. It's just stolen everything. AI just stolen everything, bro. What are you gonna do now, Mr. Artist, who spent way too much time painting some bullshit with pixels and shit? If it's meaningless, you didn't do shit. You know." You have to balance values, balance everything. And internet can just spit on your face in the end. If you make a single mistake, it seems. Alright. Bye-bye.